105.3 Seaside FM. I'm Justin McCartney. With me now is Dr. David Bellamy, who's popped along to uh, uh, investigate the coastline here today in uh, wonderful weather and sea on the east coast of Yorkshire. The Holderness Coast is, uh, well, it's uh, receding due to erosion. Uh, is that a natural process or is it... Uh Oh, absolutely. If we'd been sitting here uh, 10,000 years ago, we'd have been under ice quite a lot of it. And, um, you know, the, um, the last ice age was coming to an end, things warmed up, and people then very soon were here um, hunting mammoths and things like that. So it's a wonderful a bit of natural history. Now, of course, the last ice age went about 10,000 years ago, right? Well, started to go, yeah. yeah. Some people say we're due another ice age pretty soon then. Well, that's what we always think, and actually the um, everything uh, is pointed to that now, because uh, we're into another um, solar cycle, and in two years, um, it, and there hasn't been um, a single um, sunspot. And uh, last time that happened, um, the, um, the Thames in London froze. Because you, the only heat that we get, which keeps um, us warm here, um, comes from the sun. And, you know, you, if you get a lot more um, heat from the sun, then the things melt. And when um, you get a bit colder, and just think of the winter we've just had. Um, and we are, well, um, quite a lot of people say we are heading for another, not another ice age, but 30 years of pretty cold weather. Some people in recent years have lampooned you a bit. You're not a great advocate of the global warming uh, scenario that a lot of well, people are p expounding. Thank God for global warming, because if it hadn't warmed up 10,000 years ago, where would we have been? Um, and you you just got to look at the, along this coast. You see, when all the ice was on the land here, it pressed it down. And as Scotland had much, much more ice, um, Scotland went down and England come up. And since that melted, it turned. And we're still going down completely naturally. And that's why we've uh, got a lot of, um, you know, um, erosion going on this thing. So um, it's not easy. Natural climate um, change I believe in because I can go and look here and find the proof of that. But there is no, actually no um, real scientific proof that man has affected the, um, uh, the rise in temperature. That is the sun. What what you're saying is the Earth's uh, ecosystem is is so powerful that it can cope with 99.9% uh, .9 of things that it's throwing at it. Well, I, I would have thought so. And when you think that the temperature has only gone up 0.7 of a degree centigrade, and if I walked outside that, if the sun goes, um, you know, behind the clouds, it gets colder, and if it come out, as it just popped out, and it got warmer. So it is natural thing. And as um, Obama last week turned around and said, look, we haven't got this straight and we have got to sort it out and find out what is really happening before we waste billions of pounds on solving a problem which perhaps isn't there. Yes. It, it, it's, strange, it's strange to me that uh, uh, previous governments... Uh, if you remember back to uh, a couple of hundred years ago, they used to have a window tax for having windows in your house. And now we have like carbon tax uh, to offset your, your carbon footprint. It seems to me it's a very convenient way of making an awful lot of money out of, of many uh, yes, sort of and, people. And they are selling carbon. And who owns it? We own the, the thing. And if we actually wanted to double the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, we'd have to burn all the known gas, all the known um, oil, and one third of all the coal in the world. And that would only put the temperature up by two degrees centigrade. If we'd have been sitting here in the 
um, medieval times it was warmer. If we were been sitting here in the times of the Romans it was three to five. So it's a load of codswallop. Another aspect that they always talk about is the fact that there isn't enough resources on the planet to feed everybody. And this is a thing I find rather curious because in this country, we already waste an incredible amount of food. In, in North America, they, they waste an incredible amount of food. Uh, we all, we're all fat. We could all do with eating less. Uh, so I find it a bit strange to say that we, there isn't enough food to go around whenever uh, there's so many things that say, well, the population's growing. There must be enough food to feed all these people. Well, uh, we certainly can feed the number of people you've got. But a lot of people don't have access to that feed. And more of the more of the people in the developing countries are now turning around and saying, come on, we have got to cut back on the number uh, of people. Because yet not only do they want food, but they want the resources. And do we want a, a, a world full of million, 9.1 million people and that seems to uh, all the scientists say that's what we'll get up to. Can we actually, do, would, do we want to live in a world with that many people? It would be rather cr crowded in certain parts of the world with uh, 9.1 billion people. Well I mean Britain uh, now is the second most populated thing in the EU. Yes. And you know and we don't feed ourselves. Much of our food comes from Africa and places like that. And the, another thing, uh, we are seeing uh, more and more um, coal mines being reopened in Fife to back up things like um, uh, you know, wind turbines. And we haven't got it. And all we're doing is all round and round. And, Obama, I think, was very, very brave saying that um, last week, that perhaps we should look at this and get the facts right before we waste all that money. It, it's all very well. It, it is going to cost a lot of money to invest in these new technologies, and quite often the cost of production of these new technologies is more than the benefits that you get out of them. But... It, Surely there's a case for us all being more efficient anyway and, and getting our food from closer to home anyway rather than getting it from Africa. Well, yeah. I mean, when you think that when I was a kid in London um, uh, in the war, I heard Winston Churchill say that um, we must keep the sea lanes open. And why, I asked my dad, because we haven't been able to feed ourselves since the First World War. So we are living on imports, and back in those days, if the Germans had uh, closed down, we were all blind. And when you think that um, America now produces probably a third of all the um, grub which is um, you know, produced in the world, and they're running out of water. And for, uh, even if you're the best farmer in the world, you can't make um, food if you crops if you actually uh, don't have uh, the weather for it. And we've just had, well, the BBC uh, have the, the last four years uh, promised a, a hot, dry um, uh, you know, uh, years, and it hasn't happened yet. And I'm looking out there, um, and we've just had a, a rain, and thank goodness the farmers have got their um, crops in, and they're all smiling. But without water, they can't do it. Okay. Uh, Dr. David Balmy, thank you very much for talking to us today on 105.3 Seaside FM. Thank you for having me, and I'm going out in the sun.